Hello everybody and welcome back to my scrappy place. Today we are going to make this really cool birthday card. Um, I think this card is perfect for a more masculine type thing if you don't want anything really frou-frou-y. This would be perfect for uh, a man in your life, son, husband, grandfather, whatever, or maybe just just somebody in general who doesn't necessarily need frou-frou and, and frills and and bling bling but this card super simple to make and in order to make it we are going to be using the rooted in nature stamp set which is in our annual catalog this particular stamp set comes in two parts so when there's a glare on the case and because of my lights but basically uh, you get two sets and you see it has 16 different stamp sets within the two cases um, what we're going to be using today is the one on my left. It's got the leaves. So it's got a big leaf and a smaller leaf. And these are the red rubber sets and stamps. So this is what we're going to use today. And in order to do this, I'm also going to pull out my Stamparatus. Now, this stamp set is a little bit one of the pricier stamps um, because it is the two part or the two pieces you can also get a, a um, hmm, where is it at oh you can also get the coordinating framelits so that you can cut out some of the shapes and you'll see when you're looking at the case here I'll kind of lay the case in the background maybe it won't be too well there's a big glare there, there's just no way around it there's a big glare um, you can see the different shapes. So like this tree here, you can cut out with that. There's trees that you can cut out for this one right here. So that one goes there. This tall skinny one will cut out that. The leaves also, this set also comes with, and this is really cool. This is kind of something new for Stampin' Up! At least I believe it to be something new. This has um, a set where you can not only cut it out, the leaves out, for instance, like this <clears throat> big leaf here, but what you can do is you can cut out the leaf and then you can emboss it. And somewhere in here, I have one that I've already done that I laid to the side. Um, this was on our foil paper, and you can see that I used this shape to cut it out. And then once I had cut it out, then I laid this on top of it, and it embossed coming out with that really cool texture so you can see that so that's something that's really cool with these um, framelits and like I said you can pick it up as a set and save 10% by purchasing the stamps and the framelits together like I said it is a little bit of a pricier one but I think that what I have to show you in this video and in future videos you'll see that you can really use this stamp set for more than just making um, woodlandy kind of cards but for today we are going to use it to make this um this birthday card so let's go ahead and get started and what I have done is I have just taken a standard piece of cardstock and this is my typical base which I always use it is eight and a half inches long by five and a half um, and then it's scored at four and a quarter in the middle to make it a flip over fold over card so in this case, we're going to be opening it like this, okay? So we'll put that aside. Then the next one I've taken, in this card, I used uh, Night of Navy, but I'm going to be using Tranquil Tide for this one because it's just a piece, a scrap piece that I had laying around, and I thought, well, it's in the stamp, the ink color, so let's go ahead and use that. And that is cut at four and a half by three and a half. And I've also taken the Whisper White, same as this. I may have said that this was very vanilla, but this is actually Whisper White. You could certainly use very vanilla. And it is cut at four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then it will just layer on top like that. But first, and here's where things might get a little tricky and I might have to adjust my lighting. I need to drag in my Stamparatus. And here is the Stamparatus. And yeah, there is a pretty good glare on here. And I'm gonna be using both plates today. If you're not familiar with the Stamparatus, it is a stamp positioning tool. Let me get the light adjusted a little bit. It might get a little darker on the video, but I think you'll still be able to see okay. 
It is a stamp positioning tool that we have and what makes ours different than the other ones on the market or most of the ones on the market only have one plate. You can stamp like this. Ours has two plates. So you can either stamp this way or you can put the second one in and stamp this way. So if you've got two different things going on and you're going to see exactly how I use the two different um, plates here in just a minute. So for now, I'm going to take out the one on my left hand side and put it aside until I get done with what I'm going to do for the card part. And what I've done here is if you look on here and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to zoom really in far, but you can you can see that there's like grid lines and this is plastic. Um, so if you got ink on it, you can wipe it off. Something that new that has come out is we are now selling a pad of paper, of grid paper. It's similar to our big grid paper um, that fit, that you can tear one off. Or I sometimes just put the whole pad in there and lay it on there so that you don't get ink on your, um, on your platform here. Now, the grid marks are like printed underneath the plastic, so they're not gonna scratch off. There's no grooves in it or anything like that. I'm shaking the camera a little bit, but trying to show you that there's nothing, it's not gonna hurt this. Now, if you put a, a permanent ink on it, it's not gonna come off. But that's why we start, are selling the pads of paper now. Okay, so what I have done is I have already taken my stamp and lined it up on my on my platform and the way I did this I'm going to have to move back a little bit so you can see what I'm doing I already set this up beforehand but what I would typically do is I would lay my my cardstock down wherever I wanted it put my stamp on the paper laying it down exactly where I wanted it I would flip up my plate and pick up the stamp and it, and it would be stuck on here. So we kind of see the, the what I'm going with right there. For time's sake, I've already laid this out and I know where I need to put my paper. And that's what I love about this is it's going to be lined up perfectly as long as you do just a little bit, a little bit of math beforehand. And the colors that I'm using today are gonna to be Old Olive, Night of Navy, and Tranquil Tide. Now what I have personally found when I'm using my Stamparatus, unless I have a huge stamp, I have started getting these little ink spots and we sell them and you can buy them. They come in a package of five. Let me show you my package here. And they're uninked. And so what I have done is I have started making my own little ink pads. And these are also really great if you're gonna go somewhere and you wanna take a few inks you know, inks, but you don't want to take the whole big. What I've done is I've taken an empty one of these and the lid just comes off. Well, it's hard to get off. The lid comes off and it's a fabric with foam. And then I just take my ink refills like this. This is the Tranquil Tide and I make my own color. So basically that's what I've done. So you're not gonna see me using the big pads. You're gonna see me using little squares like this. So I'm using Tranquil Tide, um, Night of Navy. These are, they have come in, these little ones that have the actual labels on them have actually come in my paper pumpkin kits over the years. And I just haven't gotten the kit that had Tranquil Tide in it yet. So I made my own and then I, you can see I put a label on it so that I know that that's the lid that goes to it. And I also put the same label on the bottom that way I know if the lid and the ink pad gets separated, I know that that is the Tranquil Tide and that's the lid for it. Okay, so what we're going to do is basically take my little ink spot and what am I gonna, let me put this magnet down just in case I've got it lined up and I know that I want my Knight of Navy leaf, the blue one, to be about in the middle of this page. So I've got my, I've got my paper right where I want it. I'm going to ink up my stamp and then I'm going to just simply 
press this and if the camera shakes a little bit you know my table and my light if you've seen any of my videos you, my table is set up on the same table that I'm stamping on so after I've stamped my blue one and it's exactly where I want it I'm gonna take my stamp and chamois and I've whacked mine into four different little or three different pieces and it looks gross but it's perfectly good I actually ran this one through the washing machine earlier and it's it's damp but it's clean even though it doesn't look like it's clean it really is and I'm gonna clean the blue ink off of that okay now well, my fingers my fingers are now blue so. let's see if I can find an egg white and get some of that off before I before I totally destroy this card with my inky fingers I have to go to I'll be going to on a trip tomorrow for work and I have a feeling that I'm going to be showing up in Nashville with funky fingers. So, um, all right, enough of that. <laughs> okay, so my blue ink is done. The next one that I want to do is my Tranquil Tide. And what I did to, in order to make sure that I got this spaced out the way I wanted it, I basically just counted lines I moved it over five tick marks per se I guess you could say and this this one right here this um, post-it note I know you're having a hard time seeing it let me see if I can move this where you can see me better I've got my setup a little wonky this I know the, the bottom of my card is gonna go along here but I'm moving this it was right here so I'm going to move it over five spaces that way to my right so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and five. So I know that I need to line it up um, in this corner right here. You don't have to get, I mean, you really, if you wanted to, if you were just feeling brave, you could certainly do this. Go rogue and just put your stamp on the block and go for it. Um... I'm just showing you the different things that you can do with our Stamparatus. All right, I'm stamping up my, or I'm inking up my stamp. Boy, I can't talk today. It has been one of them days. I'm stamping up, or inking up my stamp, and I'm going to lay it down. And my camera's shaking, so sorry. And then I've got it perfectly lined up and perfectly spaced. Now, I'm going to wipe that off. And let's see if I can do it without, I'm gonna, without getting my fingers. I'm going to actually take it off and clean it. That's the nice thing about this is I can take it apart and clean it off. I love this particular stamping platform. And trust me, I've had like every one of them I think that's on the market. Um... But I like ours the best. All right, so if I were to go back to my starting point, which was right here, and move it five spaces to the left, I'm going to end up right here. Okay, put my magnet down. I'm going to get my old olive ink spot out, and I'm going to ink that up without shaking the table too bad. All right, and I will bring that down. Give it a good press. And there are my three, three leaps, okay? So now I'm going to take this plate off and move it aside. And I told you earlier, um, I used the Rooted in Nature for the, um, the leaves. I'm gonna be using the Perennial Birthday, which is kind of an older set. Um, for the saying on the card, you can tell it's an older set because it's in a different kind of case. This is how it used to come. Our cases used to be, well, the cases are the same, but the inserts were green and, and now they're just black and white. So anyway, I'm going to be using this happy birthday and put it on here. And I've already positioned it. And this is what I was talking about earlier. I'll show you how I did this one. I've got my stamp, my plate, and I'm going to put it in the side maybe boy okay put it there and I know first of all make sure that I've got the happy birthday going the right direction 
and I'm going to lay that because I want it to be right about there when I am done with this. I'll put that down and then it picks up the stamp right there. Okay, for this one I am going to use, if I can find it, my... Um, hmm. Hmm. It's amazing the mess that I make in such a short amount of time. I'm going to be using my Memento Black ink if I can find it. Here it is. Yeah, it looks like I've got a nice neat space going on. And I probably do in a space of about, I don't know, two feet by a foot and a half. But the rest of this table is covered in stuff. So anyway, I'm going to ink up this. And you may be wondering, okay, this looks like an awful lot of trouble to make one little card. And I wouldn't say that it's a lot of trouble, but if you don't get a good impression, it's always nice because this, as long as you don't move this, you can go back and stamp a little harder, a little bit darker to make sure you get a really good dark impression. And that's what I'm gonna do. You notice I didn't re have to reposition anything. I didn't have to move anything else. I just re-inked it. Now I've got a nice, good, happy birthday. Okay, let's get that ink closed up and out of the way. And again, you know, for one card, honestly, I would probably just do it like I described earlier. I'd probably put my leaf stamp on a block and just bam, 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 do that across and be done. But if you're making a whole bunch of cards, Maybe you need to make a whole bunch of birthday cards or you need to make a whole bunch of Christmas cards and they're all going to be the same. This is the way to go because once you have it positioned, the only thing you have to make sure you do is lay your paper in the same place that you started out with to begin with, which is where the it comes in handy using these little post-it notes. And you can just do it um, assembly line style, bam, 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 and it's done. So anyway, there's my soapbox on that. There's my little plug for the Stamparatus, which I think is awesome. And I will move that aside and I'll finish up with the rest of the card. I just took, like I said, my piece of Tranquil Tide. I am going to get my, almost my wet glue is almost empty, but we'll make it work. I tend to like to use the wet glue on my cards. I happen to live in a state where it's a bit humid in the summertime especially and if I don't use a wet glue or we used to have fast use which I really really loved the snail works perfectly fine if you live in a drier climate I just find that it doesn't hold together so well in my climate it'll stick together but then after a while um, it kind of comes apart and you can see with the wet glue I didn't get it straight that first time and I had a little bit of a little bit of time to get it straight and this still isn't perfect but for my needs today it's gonna work I'm going to take a little bit of our twine and I'm telling you I just don't have my stuff together today um, I'm gonna take some of our linen thread which is right here and let's zoom in just a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing there we go I'm going to take some of my twine, and I, I like to take my bone folder because it comes on this card, and it gets bends, and it, can you see how it's kind of, you may not be able to tell, but it's not, it's got little kinks in it. I just take my bone folder and run it along, and that straightens it up pretty well. I never cut a certain length, I, I guess I go rogue. You know, I'm a little brave like that, but I just take a length and I want it wrapped around about, I don't know, three times or so. Cut it off. And I just, it, you don't have to put the twine on it. It just gives it a little something extra. And then I'm not the greatest at, let's get this a little bit more even. Why don't we? Make that a little bit longer on that end. All right, let's just start over because this is this is a mess. <laughs> All right, okay. Sorry about that. Um, 
yeah, it's been a, a few days since I made a video and I'm, I'm a little rusty and I've got a knot in my rope and that's okay. All right, so we're gonna try this again. We're gonna... There and do a bow and this is like I said, this is gonna be kind of rustic kind of masculine and personally guys don't really care if your bows are straight. I can speak from experience. My husband really couldn't give a rip. He saves all the cards that I give him, but you know, he's not going to be as critical as a girlfriend of mine, you know, like my female friends would be. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so I'm going to take that, and when we're almost done at this point, I'm going to take my card base that I did earlier and move to the side, and have since lost. Here we go. And I'm going to take a few dimensionals. If I can find those, I'm telling you people, I am. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll have to open up a new pack of dimensionals because I can't find my other one. All right. Take a few dimensionals to pop them up. They're right there, right there, right there, and right there. And I don't know. I just feel like this needs a little something extra. So I think what I'm going to do, and this may be, this may be a huge mistake, I don't know, but we're gonna give it a whirl. I'm going to get an, one of my markers. And I promise I'm still here, I just had to walk across the room. And we're gonna do a little bit of spritzing on this, and it may just be a colossal mess by the time I'm done. But I feel like it needs something. So I'm gonna take some paper, to protect my workspace and in order to spritz and I probably should have done it before I actually tied the um, the string on it but we, we get what we get I'm gonna take my Stampin' Write marker and this is the marker that matches it's the tranquil tie it matches the stamp set or the ink set one end has a fine point where you can write with like just a pen skinny end the other end is more of a brush thicker and this is the end that I'm going to use and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going let me zoom out a little bit so you can see I'm going to put the tip of my brush in the little lid and I'm just going to flick it and I'm going to flick it here and there and it's going to go everywhere there we go and it will not mess up the tip of your your pan if you don't go bananas two bananas so that just gave it a little bit of bladders I don't know if you can see that or not on the camera but there yeah you can see it and it just added a little bit of something that I thought the card needed so I'm going to take off the um, backings from our dimensionals and put it on our card base like that and there we go not too shabby I could have centered this piece a little bit more within the green but um yeah i kind of like it happy birthday so like i said if you needed a card to give to a guy a father a grandfather a son but you felt like everything else you had is a little bit too for fruity this would be perfect so there you go i hope you enjoyed it and come back and see me another day i'll leave the link to my blog on all the measurements and the products that i used um, and you can shop with me, get whatever you need. Like I said, this is the Rooted in Nature, available in our annual catalog. And you'll be able to get this until May, the last day of May of 2019. So thanks so much. And we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.